Now, shares of the digital media engagement tracker Double Verify surging after making its public debut in the New York Stock Exchange. Let's bring in the CEO, Mark Zorgorski, for more. Mark, um, talk to me first about your experience um, on the listing. And, you know, we've had a couple of rocky starts recently. Then we had, um, you know, a wild trade in uh, Coinbase and it came off after that. W what do you look for and what have you appreciated? Yeah, you know, look, we're, we're super excited, obviously, to make our debut on the, in the public marketplace. And I think, you know, when we look at what's happened here, you know, with the, with the, the nice uh, you know, launch we've had here today, it just comes down to the fundamentals of, you know, great companies are going to do well uh, in the public markets. And we're a company that really is playing in the rule of 60. We had 34 percent revenue growth last year. We're dropping 30 percent EBITDA margins. So... You know, look, we, we are in the midst of, you know, very significant changes in the way people deal with digital media and the advertisers' expectations of performance across digital media, and we're analyzing that. So we think we're in a great spot. We love, um, you know, the way we came out today. We think we're, you know, we've got, we're poised for significant growth moving ahead, and, um, you know, we're happy with the debut. The pandemic clearly affected consumer behavior as we see from Netflix. Some of it stuck, some of it didn't. Um, how is Double Verifying dealing with the reopening trade? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, the pandemic obviously was something that, that we weathered incredibly well last year. Uh, you know, we're a utility for our advertisers. And when times are tough and ad dollars get squeezed, you know, evaluating what happens with those advertisers becomes doubly important. Right, because every dollar is, 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 is under so much pressure. As the economy opens, you know, a lot of those happens around digital engagement. So um, you know, what I'm watching, where I'm watching, how I'm watching, how I'm engaging with media, those habits aren't going to change. And if you think about what we're analyzing, we're analyzing across all digital venues. So if you're in the subway and you're, you know, you're, you're looking at a digital out-of-home ad or you're, you're you know, taking a, uh, you know, a podcast, you know, the view where we look at is we look at we're looking at everything, right? We want to analyze across all platforms. We want to measure in every place where digital ads are sold. So the opening actually is, you know, it's a great event for us. We want to see things change. But when we look at our purview, it's not just what people are doing at home. It's digital engagement everywhere on every device. Explain the just for viewers that aren't familiar with Double Verify the tech and your unique selling point, Mark? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're a software platform that enables advertisers to really deal with two of the biggest challenges today in digital advertising, which is first, uh, the, the increasing uh, preponderance of fraud. Um, there's a lot of you know, challenging characters out there who are looking to steal dollars away from advertisers in the digital space, so we deal with fraud. Um, but we're also looking at levels of engagement. Um, so not only how an ad is viewed on a page, but where that ad ends up, what we call brand safety or brand alignment. Um, that latter one, you know, brand safety, has become increasingly important to advertisers who are really you know, focused on not just what their ad says, but where that ad shows up and ensuring that aligns with who they are uh, as a company. Our technology analyzes the what, the where, and the how of that digital ad transaction to ensure that there is no fraud, that the ad is viewable by a real human being, not a bot, and that it ends up in a context yep. that is brand safe for them. But as you say, the lateral business of ensuring that it is where they want it to be and they're not where they don't want to be is increasingly important. Um, your investor base is uh, fairly notable, in, in part because Tiger bought in big on the IPO. Providence maintains a sizable share. Um, wh what do you think retail investors should take away from that? I think, you know, look, we, we've got an incredible imprimatur from, as you noted, from folks like Tiger and Providence, as well as BlackRock, Fidelity, others that have kind of come in on the IPO. Uh, I think what that says is, you know, they've done a lot of work. They've spent time with us. They understand the business proposition. And they know that we're dealing with, you know, long-term secular trends. And these trends, you know, around ad fraud and brand suitability aren't going away. Um, and they're making bets on us. And, and we've got the momentum in the past that kind of proves out the model. And, you know, we think we have a, a really great future. So I think from the retail perspective, 
Um, you know, there's been work done on this and, and we've got, you know, really smart people behind the business.